What I'm really getting to is life was a disappointment to me. I had gotten hooked on drugs. I, I was living terribly, breaking my mother's heart. And I thought, oh my goodness, this can't be it. There's got to be something better than this. My name is Eddie Willis, and this is my story. The beginning of my recollection of being raised was in the lower bottom of West Oakland, California, which is the lowest end of West Oakland. West Oakland in itself was a tough part of town. The lower bottom was even tougher. Every day in the neighborhood or at school, you had to be ready for battle. Basically, that's how I learned to fight. If you don't, you don't survive. Well, I took that with me in my teenage years, and I had a very bad temper, easy to explode. I met Wanda when I was in the fourth grade. There was one little black girl who was nice to me, and she allowed me to play pogo stick with her. Wanda and my life had crossed paths several times before we became a couple. I wasn't really trying to hear the message of the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party was trying to do their best at being a service for the entire community, from the, the young children to the senior citizen and everything in between. They had legal assistance. They had the breakfast program for children. They had a tutoring facility. Wanda and I joined the Black Panther Party in 1968. So I believe at that time I might have been 18 or 19 years old. Now Wanda was more interested in the nurturing aspects of the party, uh, ministering to young girls, feeding the young children at the breakfast program. Martin Luther King was still the dominating message of nonviolence. Once Martin Luther King was assassinated, that swung a lot of young people, including me, uh, to the other side. And then there was always the occasional incident where someone of African descent would have been killed or abused by a police officer, whether it was in our community or somewhere across the nation. And so these things, these realities began to seep in. What drew me to the Black Panthers was, you know, there's that old saying, there's strength in numbers. I began to feel more secure about myself in my own community. Well, when I began to get a little disillusioned, Wanda came to me one day and informed me that she was very disappointed and unhappy with how many of the male members were treating young girls. It was so bad to the point where she decided she was not going to be a part of it anymore. She quit. I didn't quit, but that was planted in my brain. But there were a lot of black men who had axes to grind. They were in pain and they wanted to inflict pain. I just saw that things were beginning to get fragmented. So I figured that with that, I would make my exit. What I'm really getting to is life was a disappointment to me. I had gotten hooked on drugs. I, I was living terribly, breaking my mother's heart. And I thought, oh my goodness, this can't be it. There's got to be something better than this. And so I tearfully cried out to the Lord for help. I made up my mind that I was 
going to be sensitive to his presence and, uh, and allow him to lead me wherever, whatever next was. And so one of the night conversations on the phone with Wanda, and so Wanda said, well, why don't you just move down here? The next day I was in Los Angeles. I had been affiliated with lots of churches. She was kind enough to try and introduce me to a church that was like my church. Each time I went, nobody ever spoke to me. So one morning I said, why don't we just go to your church? It really blew me away because I saw all of these whites embracing my family. I mean, hugs and kisses everywhere. And then they greeted me like they'd known me for 10 or 20 years. Then I noticed there were a lot of Asians and Hispanics, and I thought, wow, now this is interesting. Every church I had been to had been predominantly this or that, uh, or maybe totally, you know. I'm gonna tell you this, that I was praying to Heavenly Father that he would lead me to people who were like-minded. And so when they called me one night, and it was the missionaries, and they asked, would I like to meet with? Well, I was jumping for joy because to me, that was the answer to the prayer. I think I had maybe five or six meetings with them. I summoned my wife and sister-in-law and told them that I decided to be baptized and they, were, they busted out in tears. When the idea of me being a part of the priesthood came up, it was just amazing to me that he would allow me this privilege and this opportunity. Now, I'm gonna tell you this, when I found out that blacks at one point in time couldn't have access to the priesthood or couldn't have access to God's holy temple, at no time did I ever consider leaving the church, okay? but I was interested to find out more. Though it is valid to feel hurt or confused by some things in the church's past, my thinking is my people have been discriminated against for hundreds of years. And as time has went on because of many of their sacrifices, I have access to some things today. So there's been so many discriminating things against my people and so many things that kept them from having access, but now they have access. Why not treat the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints the same way? If by some reason access no longer was awarded to you, and then now it is, are you going to allow yourself to not have access to such a blessing because of what man did in the past? I don't know. I don't think you should. But like I said, it wasn't reason enough for me to even consider leaving the church. However, I am not naive. The baggage of race still found me in the church. Both Wanda and I have had times of needing to remember what the core of the gospel is all about and to focus on that because inevitably the next offensive or ignorant remark will come. In my journey through life, I have uh, always been searching for something or trying to find value in my life. And all evidences that I came across, I had none. I found that it didn't matter where I came from or who I was. All I know is that after I repented and asked the Lord to help me, I didn't have to find value from a, another person, another man, or another race. 
I found my value in Jesus Christ through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, the rest is history. Or I should say, the rest is eternity. Ha, ha, ha.